Hello and welcome to another episode of the Takes from the Lakes podcast. I am James and I am joined by the greatest co-host of all time, Nash, who is flexing at the top of your screen for those watching on YouTube. It is Thursday, June 6th. Um, Game one of the NBA Finals is underway. The second half just started seconds ago. Uh, The Celtics are destroying the Mavs. Um, They're up 19 with 11 minutes left in the third, so we're about to talk about the NBA Finals a little bit, then hopefully get out of here. Not in a while. Hopefully it'll be a little bit of a shorter episode, but yeah, Nash, got any opening remarks? Yeah, I mean, more importantly than game one of the finals, James's last ever day of school. Mm. Um, so it's it's good that he's, he's chosen to spend part of that day with us here at the podcast yeah um of course man it's quite quite the honor um i i just like to set the record straight for those of you who follow our instagram james reposted his um his after graduate his after olhs post no it was nash um, with the the con with the kanye west song champion (laughs) Thinking that everybody would think you, it was me who reposted Which everyone it. probably so, did think. So, don't, don't even say so, that. Like. So 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 he just tried to get away with self-glaze. Uh, but I'm I'm hey, setting the record straight here. The only the only people um, that will realize it was self-glaze are the people that listen to the pod. So yeah, those who don't true. listen Aaron, will be will be left in the dark. Aaron asked me finals prediction, and as much as I hated to say it, I said Celtics in four. Really? Wow. Wow. So, I I I'm, just don't think I maybe it'll be five, but like I just yeah, don't think the Mavs are. There's nearly just as good. literally the only the only well, way you you can't say that there's just no way because then they'll lose. Yeah. So don't say that. No, um, but I, I was but, gonna say the only way we'll we'll get into it. We'll get into yeah. it. Let's not get um, too deep into it. We're, we're gonna go ahead and uh yeah. we're gonna do a reference. You got a reference, and I'll give my obscure yeah, stats for the finals. So, all go right. Ahead. So, my reference is I can't say too much of it, but it's uh, it's okay. Here we go. 56 yarder. The kick has nope, it does not have the leg. Oh, kick six. Yeah, all right. Kick six. Yeah, That's a good one. yeah. No, funny story. Uh, so for my like in dual, you have to do some uh, like portfolios, like end of semester portfolios, and there has to be like a motif. Um, it's so like a theme for each of the portfolios. And I did my theme as iconic sports moments. And I had like the Ooh. background of like the portfolio, like be like the LeBron and D Wade, like alley oop. And I included like oh. the kick six. I included, I gotta show you it. Um, I included like That's the kick so six tough. as one of the moments. It's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, so probably maybe the greatest college football moment of all time, uh, the kick six. Auburn's gonna win the football yeah. game. Iconic line there. But... Auburn's gonna win the football game. I yeah. I thought it, like I wanted to say all that stuff, but then like yeah. it's so obvious what it mm-hmm. is. So like yeah, I thought it was the fifty six threw me off because I thought it was fifty seven, but I guess I was wrong. So I was like, if you said fifty seven, I would be like, oh yeah, but I heard fifty six. So I was like, mm, yeah, but... it's it's a fifty six yarder. Okay, got it. Hey, um, those who don't dude, know, and, it, and it was six, way it short too. Yeah, like you 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 watch like the replay and it looks like it actually has a chance and it's just not even close because it wasn't yeah, even online even um chris da- um, uh yeah chris davis and then his son chris davis the guy who returned the kick um isn't like his son like he has like offers from auburn too no or something like that i think so yeah yeah i, I remember seeing stuff about that the other day um but yeah hey good reference man greatest or one of the greatest sports moments of all times all time um but my obscure stat will kind of lead into our NBA Finals talk. Um, so we're here watching game one of the finals. The, fr- the f- uh, first quarter just happened. Chris Epps Porzing has had like one of the greatest first quarters I've ever seen by anybody in the finals, let alone any game, really. Um, and it's really not that obscure. It just kind of leads into the conversation nicely. It's the seven, 17 point Celtics lead marks marks the, the biggest largest yeah the largest fourth first quarter, quarter first quarter point differential ever in a game one um which I thought was pretty insane and might be a little uh I guess precursor or foreshadowing for what this series might entail um because watching this game like dude I mean it's the Celtics but, really shouldn't have any reason to yeah. lose so I mean it, it sets the dog on tone is what mm-hmm. it does absolutely. Um, and something I noticed, for as good as Luca and Kyrie are, 
they make the Dallas offense so one dimensional. Mm-hmm. Like it's not even funny. It's li- yeah. it's quite literally the same exact thing every single time down the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um oh wow, Kyrie did an insane move. Um Yeah. And but... then they'll hit some like insane shot, but like it doesn't matter because the Celtics, yeah. I mean, they get so many open looks. Yeah. And, and so many everybody can shoot. And that's the thing, like well, I was like I was gonna say before that I kind of stopped myself. Like the only way the Celtics lose is if they just they just miss all their threes, which is what happened last year, which is why they lost. Um, like it's yeah. the Heat, but like they started missing their threes to start the game. I was like, oh my god, like this is about to be. And they just made like a, the rest of them for the whole uh, first quarter. Yeah, Chris Stapps was making insane shots. He would, had like three blocks in the first quarter. Um, he the fact he's back, dude. I mean, it's just yeah. they just have like seven all-star level players um he's so unguardable in the mid-range and sometimes i don't understand i don't understand a lot of times why nba teams don't exploit the mismatches more heavily yeah Mm -hmm. like that doesn't that doesn't make sense to me like sometimes i don't understand why he just doesn't go to work in the post uh yeah my and do my signature move but at the same time like teams do play insane help defense Mm -hmm. like and, and they just and rotate so well. And that's and yeah, and that's the other thing that people don't understand about the NBA is like a wide open three in the NBA is a shot that like to most people is heavily contested. There's not a single shot that goes up where there's not a hand, at least in the mm-hmm. vicinity. Yeah. Like it is it is completely and utterly, especially in the finals, like nearly impossible to see a shot that's like wide open. Yeah, and so people don't really understand that, like the difference between open in the NBA and the difference between open, like in your at your LA Fitness, right? Yeah, like mm-hmm. like there's always some dude closing out, and and always. and as much as the defense like seems trash, it's just because the players are so good. Like you get to a certain point where you're just so good at putting the ball in the bucket. Like yeah, it's yeah, um, absolutely. Um, and like, how do you close out? On Chris Tapps. it like it did, dude. He he's seven three. I mean, how, I mean, you. I mean, how do you close out on Tatum? He's like six. Exactly. What? I mean, eight, how do you close and, like, out? Releases dude. releases at such a high. Like also yeah. for whatever reason, Jalen Brown is looking especially shifty tonight. Yeah, I noticed that. Like he's actually looking like he has ball skills and can dribble the ball, which is nice. Oh, um, he has ball skills. He has, he absolutely has ball skills. Um, but yeah, he's hit a couple of really, I mean, dude, it's just like everyone, like Sam Hauser had a three where he like caught it at his head level and immediately like shot it straight from there and made it like Pritchard's had, yeah. um, made, I want to say a couple of threes, Derek Wise, like just everyone's doing their thing. They're making literally all their shots. They're playing insane defense. Um, yeah. and yeah, it's, uh been a bit of a blowout what do you think about like so when they go back to dallas Mm -hmm. how do you perceive the threat of like luca putting 60 on your heads yeah i mean well i i will guarantee that Kyrie goes for at least 40 or 45 maybe even 51 i get i i'm like 70% 70% sure Kyrie will, Kyrie will go for at least 40 in game two. Like, he's going to have one of those games at the Garden where he's just going to go off. He always does it. He does it, He's done it, done it in every series he's played um, against the Celtics. So I know that's coming. But Luka, I mean, like, that's like Luka can do his thing. Like, the Celtics know that. They're going to let Luka do his thing. They're going to let P.J. Washington and Derek Jones shoot these shots. That's what they've done this whole game, and they've missed them all. Um, but that's, like, immediately once I started watching this game, I was just like, Dude, like, and De- and Derek Jones hit that one right off rip, and it's looking like, oh wow, it's gonna be a yeah. long night. But then, but they just started missing all of them. Um, like literally, right when I started watching the game, I was just like, this team, like, they're not that good. Like, they have Luca and Kyrie. Obviously, they've been balling, but dude, they have Derek Jones, PJ Washington, and either Lively or Gafford on the court along with them, dude. And like, it's against yeah, like they have they have depth. But it's not like a loaded team like mm-hmm. the Celtics are. Like, yeah, which is I immediately noticed. I was like, this might be, this could get out of hand. I mean, it did get out of hand. But as far as the um the series goes, you know, now, I mean, I, th- I think a, they'll get a couple though. From an unbiased perspective, I want to see it be close, especially the games in yeah. Boston, mm-hmm. because the Kyrie villain arc is so insane. Yeah. 
It is. And it um, and it would be really cool to have a game seven in the garden and like Kyrie go off and like the Celtics yeah. and like you go to like that would be nuts. Yeah. Which but, is why, but like like I think he will have that villain game though. Like he'll go yeah. for like fifty and, and they, they might win. Um yeah, he is a dog. Um but like as far as actually winning the game and winning multiple games against this team, it's just not like gonna have to pray to God the Celtics going to app like a crazy cold streak shooting the ball and then you know you just the ball rolls your way as they say but yeah i mean it's 14 point game oh, right wow, now Vincent, so it's still he's going not to cornell yeah yeah he is um wow. anyway it's a little sidetrack but yeah, it's not over yeah no it's 14 point game right now halfway through the third so we'll see how it goes um i haven't paid super close attention to this third quarter um looks like luke is kind of just um getting his way but you know we'll see we will yeah. see but you got anything else to say about i guess we kind of overestimate how much we'd actually talk about it um, well i think the thing about it is we know what's going to happen mm-hmm. for the most part um yeah what what are your prediction like what's your prediction for the series I mean, I said I said Celtics in six at the start, and it's easy to like look at this game and be like, oh, like yeah, Celtics in four. Um, but like, I think it's I think they might get out of here in five. I mean, yeah, like PJ Washington and Derek Jones are getting the same amount of shots as like Derek White and Drew Holiday are getting. You know, it's like that's just not a recipe for yeah. success. I mean, and, and like I said, Luca and Kyrie are gonna do their thing. They're gonna. Kerry's gonna go for fifty. Luke is gonna go for fifty. But okay, that's cool. Like, yeah, it's. It, I don't really think it's gonna matter. Um, um do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk some baseball? I'm sure. I'm down. What? How? How much time have we? Uh, we're like twelve, thirteen, right now. Yeah. Chilling. Let Let's talk some baseball. Hey, that works. Um, I think for the first time this you're year, you're a Boston Red Sox. Yeah, they're they're mid as hell. Yeah, I mean, first time this year. Yeah. Um, it's the most um, obvious eighty-one and eighty-one season for the Sox. Um, but hey, Royals thirty-seven yeah. and twenty-six. That's tough. Ooh. That is tough. Yeah, but... I mean, the thing about the AL East is just like all the teams are so at least decent. Like, yeah, there's like three. None they... of them are bad. Like, there's three mid teams, and the Orioles are pretty good, and the Yankees are like really good. Um, now I saw I saw an insane now. The it stinks that the Guardians are like actually good, because the Royals would be in the lead of the West. Mm, yeah, and or the Central. I mean, we no, we 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 we'd be oh, you'd be in the, the lead West. if you're in the West. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and like we were we were a game and a half back from the Guardians, and then we dropped a couple to the Rays. Mm-hmm. However. Mm-hmm. It's getting to the point where it might just not it might not be a fluke. Yeah, I mean um, they're almost halfway through the season at this point. Is We're it Cunha there, out, is it Cunha out for the season? Yeah, torn ACL. I think it's yeah. ACL, but yeah, dude, so sucks. unfortunate that he's always hurt. The yeah. Phillies are nuts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's been um, super like the candidates for like AL to start the AL All Star game are like Tariq Skubal, Tanner Houck, and, like, yeah. Seth Lugo, you know? Like, is Garrett yeah. Cole, his arm's busted. Um, there's Corbin Burns, I guess, been doing anything. But, like, as far as pitchers go, like, really in the, the entire MLB. Ranger Suarez has been Seth, balling, but he got hurt. Um, Seth Lugo and Cole Reagans have been dogs. Yeah. Um, I think I think Cole Reagans actually is, went, is higher than Lugo as far Cole as... Cole Reagans is game, actually, but... like, is actually an ace. Yeah. Low yeah, key. I, obviously, like Bobby Witt's great. Pasquantino's great. You know who's been amazing? Nelson yeah. Velasquez. Oh mm-hmm. my gosh. He's been awesome. Yeah. Uh what's he what's he hitting right now? I mean 215. 215. 215 but he's got eight bombs, 23 yeah. RBIs. Um mm-hmm. yeah. Just feels like when I'm watching my ticker, he's always the guy driving him in. So, yeah. Yeah, as far as 
like standout teams. I mean, Yank has been doing their thing. Like you, uh, you mentioned, Guardians. Um, uh, Houston's been horrible this year. Like really bad. I mean, not really bad. Twenty yeah. and thirty-five. Manners leading that, leading the uh, AL West. Philly's been the best team in baseball, kind of the whole season. Um, they're like twenty-eight and six, or like twenty-eight and five in their last thirty-three games at one point, like a week or two ago, which is just absolutely nuts. Yeah. Um, NL Central is kind of mid. Gunner, Gunner Henderson, there. obviously. Gunner is like. Like I'm pretty sure he's yeah AL Milwaukee. leading for AL MVP. Um, yeah, the Central Milwaukee Shota Imanaga has yeah. been actually so sick, like so so sick. Um, Red Sox should have signed him, but yeah, out of Japan, Rookie of the Year, um, leading Rookie of the Year, the the Rookie of the Year race in the West or in the NL. But not, um, but not y- Yamamoto hasn't been as um. Yeah, I haven't really. How has he been? I haven't keep, exciting. Keep in touch or kept in touch with him. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he's, he's, he's been good. Um, I mean, three three two ERA, twelve games. He's he's been good, but Imanaga is kind of been, yeah. He's not he's not bad, but like yeah, yeah. One one point one two WHIP is pretty good. Yeah, but um, yeah. The Dodgers are like, I mean, above sixty percent win rate, but they're like, it seems like they're more mid than they actually are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's not a in very, past like, years they would be like forty five and like the rest of that divi- the rest of that division is trash. Yeah, yeah. The rest of that division is pretty trash. The, mm-hmm. I mean, the the Padres are all right, but yeah, Corbin no Carroll I think has been like the Diamondbacks are kind of they can um been around five hundred. He's been struggling. He's batting one ninety two right now. Corbin Carroll is um reigning and all yeah. rookie of the year, yeah. so he's got a. You gotta figure some stuff out. I mean, but... was that was that just a fluke? Was that just a fluke World Series run? I mean, they low key fluke is low key fluke is hard to like. I mean, hard to even like say it was because they were they won like eighty something games, so like it's kind of easy to say that. But I mean, it's not like if anyone was expecting them to be back. You know, I think nobody was expecting them to be as bad as they are right now. Like they would think they would be over five hundred, but um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. It Dude, is tough. the the AL set the AL Central just rake the AL Central just rakes mm-hmm. like except for the White uh, Sox, they're so bad. Jose oh Ro- my god! Yeah, Jose, Ho- yeah, actually terrible. Mm. Garrett Crochet is their best player. Yeah, um, but Jose Ramirez one forty six OPS plus so good. so um, good. Bob Bobby Witt is hitting three nineteen. Um, and eleven home runs. It's actually insane. Like, yeah, let me pull up the Savant, um, baseball Savant. They get some good. They're like they got some good percentile rankings as far as who's been raking. Yeah, Judge and Soto have been the top two hitters in baseball. Shohei's yeah. been like actually insane. Like he's still in MVP conversations at um being just a DH. Marcelo Zuna has been insane. Go and he goes so far under the radar. Like. Hmm. Actually nuts, he's on that stack but... team. Never, no, not, people don't forget about him. It's just like okay, like it's Shohei, like he's gonna do his thing. Yeah, um, he's got the he's got the third best average in the MLB. Not the average. I know average is like a flawed mm-hmm. stat, but still, um, yeah. Um, Sal- Salvi hitting for three oh nine as a a thirty four year old. Yeah, it's pretty insane. Marcelo Zuna rakes. Judge Adley has like rakes, Judge obviously. had like nineteen home runs in May or something like that. It was actually he's got twenty one right now. Yeah. Um, Lamont Wade's been balling, and then as far as other yeah, I mean, surprises, Gunner, Gunner Henderson, like at his, I mean, I guess he's six three two twenty. He's bigger than I realized. Mm-hmm. Um, but nineteen bombs as like yeah. not he's not really like advertised as a pow, power guy. Josh yeah. Naylor, out of nowhere, just sixteen mm-hmm. bombs. Yeah. Um. I mean, that's how baseball Carlo. goes, man. Like every year, is just a bunch of random guys, and you look at their stats are bad, like three thirty, fifteen bombs. Base, I mean, baseball every year, there's like twenty random relievers come out and just throw like a one five two, or one five to two ERA. That's the cool Nolan part about Gor- it, man. Nolan, Nolan Gorman has been good. Shea, Shea Langoliers mm-hmm. for the A's. Yeah, the A's haven't been He's too like, bad either. In their final yeah. season in Oakland, but is it that? Is it happening that quick? Uh, actually, they're actually I don't might think be, I realized might be that. next year. Might be. Well, no. Oh, no. It is their final season in Oakland. They're going to Sacramento. Um, 
Yeah, I guess we haven't talked. Oh, that's about right. This. They're, yeah. they're going to Sacramento for a year and playing at like a like an indep- I don't even know, like an independent league something park that's like holds like 10k. Then they're going. They're there for like two years and they're going to, um, going to Vegas. I saw this yesterday too. Apparently, their their owner signed off on, like a deal to play 10% of their home games in neutral sites to like attract more fans or something like that, which was like really odd. And he was getting yeah. a lot of hate for that. And then we'll be like, he would play it at, at like neutral sites rather than home you're like, games. you're like throwing away a season for yeah. their ownership um, is. I mean, wow. everyone, yeah, everyone's done. That. I didn't realize Brady Singer has been as good as he has for the Royals. Yeah. 270, dude, they, 276 ERA. Our rotation is dirty. Yeah. I mean, they, they, They've just like completely changed your reputation of not being able to develop pitchers, and here they are, yeah. like one of the best rotations in baseball. Also, the Mavericks are only down eight right now. Yeah, um, so we might have um, to end it pretty soon to watch the game. Um, yes. Who else has been? Uh, Luis Gill, like kind of out of or, nowhere. Yeah, heel actually, heel. I believe. Yeah, heel. Gosh, yeah. that makes me sound so. Silly. Yeah, for the Yankees. Hey, you're good. Um, yeah, Corbin he, he Burns came up. He has... came up like a couple years ago and. It's kind of horrible, and he kind of yeah disappeared for a couple of years, and he's back up and has been balling. But it, yeah, is, Corbin it, Burns. Is, it, it is interesting how some guys remain consistent. Like Zach Wheeler has been good for so long. Mm-hmm. Aaron Nola has been good for so long. Yeah. Uh, Barrios having a pretty good year. Tyler Glass now having a good year. Yeah. Chris Sale kind of out oh, of Chris nowhere. Sale's been balling, dude. He he been was balling. bad for a couple of years. I mean, he, you know my he just was you know hurt, my yeah. favorite. My my favorite mm. pitcher is Yusei yeah. Kikuchi. Oh yeah. Love Luis. that guy. Yeah. Uh yep. Um okay, I saw something insane the other day where somebody was like basically said that Paul Skeens in the NL was like if you were to pick a pitcher to like start a game seven, he's like one of the top three or four guys in the NL. Is that like how do you feel about that? In the NL, I mean, yeah. he has – he's only pitched five games in baseball. I mean, the, yeah. the K numbers are kind of off the charts. He is disgusting, but – Yeah, I mean, he is – he's nasty. I mean, in a game seven, no. I mean, give him a full season and he pitches a high been pitching right now, then honestly, probably. But, I mean, right now I'd take probably Shota over him, um, Zach Wheeler, probably like Ranger Suarez – but I mean, it's, he's up there, dude. He's been actually insane. Um, yeah, we haven't yeah. mentioned his name yet, but shout out Paul Skeens. And then, yeah. yeah. Also, shout out College so who, Baseball too. I'm watching a little bit of that. Who else is College in the rookie, com- rookie rookie of the year conversations? And then we Looks. can sort of close it up. It's actually a good question. Let me look that up. Rookie of the Dylan year. Dylan Cease kind of revitalized his career in San mm. Diego a little bit this year. Yeah. He's always kind of been like tough there. He's kind of got lost in the uh the crap of the Chicago White Sox. Yeah, so Luis Heels number one. Um oh Mason Miller. We haven't mentioned Mason Miller yet for the A's. Actually been nuts. D three went to Gar or maybe it's D two, but went to Gardner Webb. Um around I our think, area and was horrible. Mm, that might be D one. Or sorry, no, yeah, not D three. It's it is D one, but it's like super small. Or is it maybe it's a D two? You know, we'll check that. I'm looking it up. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, it's, Gardner, the, it's, it's, it's D1. the one, but... Yeah, okay. Um, went to Gardner Webb and was, like, horrible. Then got drafted because of his stuff. Fixed it in the minor leagues and has been, like, the best reliever in baseball this year. Um, so he's up there with Ricky, for Rookie of the Year odds. And yeah. uh, shout-out Will Urabreu for the Sox. Colton Cowser, shout-out. Uh, Tide's legend. And uh, yeah. The guy in the Brewers. Um... Who, Churio? No, the bad. pitcher. The pitcher. Um, no, the no. Not the Brewers. Um, Who's the... Not Yamamoto, the other from Japan. Imanaga. Where's he pitching at? Uh, he's Cubs. Cubs. Yeah, yeah he's, he's number one for, for NL. Um, and then Paul Skeens, two. Yamamoto, three. Joey Ortiz was in the Corbin Burns uh, trade Deal. from the Orioles. He's in the Brewers now. And yeah, he's uh, even August pretty much the heavy favorite, and then Luis Heels the heavy favorite for the AL. Mason Miller right behind him, but yeah, 
still got more than half of the season left to go. All these guys yep. will shine. Got the All Star break coming up. Um, I think it's like early mid July, like a month and some change from now. So should be should be a good good time. That time is always fun. Nothing better than having a busy summer day than sitting down on the couch and turning on some baseball. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's all I got to say for all that. All right. Yeah, all right. I think that should conclude our episode. Yeah. Wow. I mean, to go look at long. us actually like staying true to our word and not going for like. An hour yeah, I mean, there's just like minutes. not that much to talk about. Yeah, we will we'll get some. As that is. Yeah, we'll we'll get some finals, um, finals recaps of the games in the upcoming weeks. We talk about whatever NFL offseason, training camp, all that, all that buzz. But yeah, I mean, that's all I gotta say. So, good work. Yeah. All right. Peace out, everybody. We'll be back Peace soon. Out. Bye.